The streak may be over. The Marlins look extremely likely to win their first ball game of the year, currently 10 and 1. With the rain delay keeping everyone in suspense, however, this is an emergency podcast because Skip Schumacher, it has been announced, released today, that his club option for 2025 has been voided. Thus, Skip Schumacher will be out as Marlins manager after this season. Does he make it all the way through the season? Tons to get into. This is Locked on Marlins. You are Locked On Marlins, your daily podcast on the Miami Marlins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings from England and welcome to Locked On Marlins, your daily Marlins pod. I'm your host, of course, Peter Pratt. Hit me up at Miami Marlins underscore UK. If you're listening to the pod, firstly, hello. Welcome to a Sunday emergency episode. This is your team every day. And thanks for making Locked on Marlins your first listen. You may have watched the game. And now this is probably a must listen, must watch episode. This is what everyone's talking about right now. We're going to dig into it big time. Don't forget, guys, there's a YouTube channel and you can subscribe there too. It's also called Locked on Marlins. And I highly recommend join me in the comments there as well. A lot of fun to be had in the comments. If you are watching, you will also see, delighted to welcome into the house for an emergency podcast again, Sean Barrett, the UK GOAT. How are we doing? I'm not too bad, Pete. These emergency podcasts really are starting to pile up now, aren't they? And unfortunately, yeah. there's not much positivity to go around. So, yeah, the, the win hopefully is in the bag at this point. It's going on a bit of rain, but... They certainly do give and they certainly take away as well, don't they, these Marlins? They absolutely do. This just sums it up for the fish. We're all sitting there having had nine games of pain. We finally get a UK-friendly Sunday when the offense explodes. They're cruising it. Max Meyer's looking like a stud. Marlins, like, Honestly, Marlins Twitter, there's people saying we could be buyers at the deadline. Everyone's getting excited. We're going to go one and nine. Max Meyer's a stud, Jazz is a stud, Nick Gordon's a stud. Next thing is, news breaks that Skip Schumacher, uh, and it isn't now. I think this is the important thing to call out. This isn't breaking news, it's just that the news has been broken now. So just to bring everyone up to speed here, if you're wondering what the hell is Pete going on about, the news reported by Bob Nightingale, uh, accurately it seems, because Craig Mish has verified that, so that's you know, that was an important step, I have to, I have to be honest. But Bob Nightingale reporting that during this winter, the Marlins and Skip Schumacher had an agreement or they have decided to void the team option that was on Skip Schumacher's contract. He had a two plus one team option. That team option has been voided, thus making Skip Schumacher a free agent after the 2024 season. That's this season. Skip Schumacher will be a free agent. Boy, oh boy, this is big news. And let's also not forget, Skip Schumacher was the manager of the year last year. Kim Ang fought for Skip Schumacher. It was her hire. She had to convince everyone. It was Kim that hit on Skip. She had to convince everyone. In the end, they came around to it, and it was absolutely the right move. Skip Schumacher, we've heard Jazz Chisholm talk about him in depth, how Skip Schumacher changed the culture, revolutionized things. And what we saw with that last year was the Marlins in the five seed for the NL. Unsup- it was a surprise. They were a bit lucky, maybe. But the culture was great. They played great. And Skip was a big part of that. Sean, with that all being said, just give me your reaction here that Skip Schumacher won't be, it seems, with the Marlins after this year. Yeah, obviously, straight off disappointment. I think Skip's done a good job. Um, I'd like to say I was shocked and surprised by this, but ultimately I'm not because I think when Kim went, the writing was somewhat on the wall. Um, mm. As you said, Kim, it was Kim's hired, and and she was she had to fight Bruce and the rest yep. of the front office, um, and and those are the people that ultimately fired her. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't think that we'd see Skip past this year. Mm. It's it's a shame because obviously we know where the Marlins are sat right now with with probably next year being a massive year 
um, depending on which, well, either way they go, it's going to be a massive year for the Marlins. So bringing yeah. in a new manager for that, uh, such a pivotal season is, is, is maybe strange. Like the Marlins never have continuity. We've had different owners, different stadiums, different managers, more probably more managers than any other team over the last however long, even though Mattingly was here for so long. It's yeah. always changed with this organisation. Um, there's ne never seems to be a, a situation where you can settle in and, and run with the same uh, system for many mm -hmm. years. So it's, it's a shame, but obviously Bendix has come in and this is now his organisation. Um, that's been made pretty clear at this point. Yeah. Uh, and obviously him and Skip, um, it was, it was never going to be, I guess. Yes. Yeah, an interesting one. Um, <laughs> I think my initial reaction, I, I, I get where you're coming from here that, you know, Skip and Kim, like we, we, we had that feeling that Skip wasn't happy that, that Kim left the organization. Like clearly the two of them had a great working relationship for obvious reasons, because Kim was absolutely incredible at doing what needed to be done to give Skip the tools that he needed. That's the thing. So, Absolutely. And I'm not I'm not shocked around the friction here because really Peter Bendix and his approach has been to pretty much do everything not to give Skip the tools that he needs to be successful. And when I read this, my gut feel on, on what's gone on, and we will likely have the proper reporters reporting on the information in due course. Um you know, we'll trust Craig and his information that likely he'll share along the way. When I read this information, my gut feel was Peter Bendix hired. No, no, okay. Kim left, Bendix in. Bendix then comes in and shares, here's my vision for the future. It is to build the Rays again. It's going to take five years plus. And to do it, what we need to do is to move all of the current arbitration eligible guys in the next two seasons. Skip, are you on board with that? And I think Skip turned around and said, no, I'm not in it for a rebuild, guys. I'm not, I don't want to be in Miami for a rebuild product. I think the point you made there, Sean, is really interesting. When, you know, for Don Mattingly and the Marlins, like Donnie knew what he was in, what he was, you know, what was going on. And he bought into that and he was happy to go through that journey. And I think that's the difference here with Skip is he hasn't signed up to that. Kim said to him, listen, I think the window is going to open. We can make some moves and we can be competitive. And she did everything possible. Peter Bendix is now, I think, walking that back. And I think Skip Schumacher has basically said, guys, listen, this isn't for me. I don't want to be part of them and, and be the skipper of a rebuilding club. It's not what I'm in it for. That's just my gut feel on, on what's happened. There could be other things in play. More family commitment related stuff. I mean, Skip's obviously just recently lost his, his dad. Like, there's maybe other factors away from the baseball field that could link to this, but this has happened in the winter. So I, I don't know if it is linked to the family situation, but this to me more sounds like change of direction. Skip's not on board. They agree. It's a mutual, you know, let's just give us 2024 skip and go from that. So disappointing news to your point though, Sean, nothing's constant. Nothing's constant with the Marlins, particularly when they have success. That's the most frustrating thing as a Marlins fan. When they haven't got any success, no, nothing changes. Everyone's given the longest leash ever. When there's success, success brings a rebuild. We saw it in 2020. We've seen it after each of the World Series. And now in this postseason berth, success for the Marlins means impending doom. That's what it means. And as a fan, Sean, how are you feeling at this point? <laughs> I've had years of this, Pete. So I'm, I'm I know used, I'm, I'm I'm not a veteran like you, mate. So I'm I'm used to the slash and burn, the, the build up, yeah. the breakdown. Um, and you're right to talking about the idea of success leads to doom because um way, way before your time, Joe Girardi um was manager of the year and he was fired halfway through the season by the owner until they were able to convince him not to do it. <laughs> And they fired him at the end of the season 
when he was manager of the year. So this is this is something similar. No Marlins manager should ever win managers of the year because it means they're going to get fired pretty quickly. Um, So yeah, I'm I'm used to this, and and I've been pretty um, hardened to the fact that we are soon due a rebuild. I'd hoped 2025 was going to be a push year, an Mm. all-in year. But these moves slowly but surely are starting to ebb away at that and make me think that th- this is it. This is now the time. And talking um, about what you just said about the idea of Bendik's idea, we knew Skip, when he signed up, was probably not going to be here for long. He didn't move his family over. Yeah. Um, he's going to end up probably the Cardinals manager um, sooner or later. I think that's just meant to be for him. So, yeah, if he was told in the winter time we're, we're going into a rebuild, he's probably thinking, well, I don't want to be here in five years' time. Yeah. This, is, this is my stepping stone. You offered me the job that yeah. got me the head job, and now, now I'm going to move that into and parlay that into a head job with a real organization. Good point. Just on the Cardinals piece, I'm pretty convinced, although they had a putrid season last year, I'm pretty convinced they extended their manager. One of the guys that the Marlins were interested in, but in the end, Skip conv- um, Kim managed to convince him to go the other way. Gut feel is with Skip, uh, to your point, Emma, to making that Cardinals connection. The Cardinals clearly love him. And, you know, I think if he's available, then they'll make a run at him, irrespective of their current manager situation. They can do whatever they want. Gut feel is, though, it's like a West Coast opening. And that then brings into play, I mean, what's to say if things go sideways a touch with the Dodgers? that Skip couldn't get a role there? Like, if the Dodgers underperform a touch this year, could there be pressure there? Could there be? Yes. The Padres, the Giants, like, they're all interesting clubs, no doubt. So I think it's definitely one to keep an eye on. The Cardinals will make a make a play for Skip, no doubt about it. The West Coast, I think, is where he wants to be. We'll see how it goes. Um, Skip Schumacher, sorry, I'm get, getting carried away here. Craig Mish, in his report, Again, with Craig, you have to look at what he's sharing and, and you know try to dig into that. What he's sharing is the timing of this is interesting. So let's talk about that after the first run of ads because I think that is an interesting point here where this new this was executed months ago and only now at 0 and 9 for the Marlins is this released. Only now, four or five days ago, is there information leaked to the media regarding trade conversations with Jesus Lozado and Luis Arias to the Padres. We're getting leaks. Why are we getting leaks and why is this happening now is the question. But before we do that, it's time to let you know about two of our good friends. We've got a double ad extravaganza here. Um, So we're going to get into that. First one is our good friends over at Backdoor. Yes, sir. Get the the graphics going for these guys. These are one of my favorites, no doubt about it. Eat stress-free this spring with Factor's delicious, Ready to eat meals. Every fresh, never frozen meal is chef crafted, dietitian approved, and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also, discover more than 60 add ons every week, like breakfast, on the go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and fuel up your springtime goals. And don't forget, they've also got gourmet meals. You can try meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, truffle butter, broccolini, and asparagus. No fuss, no mess meals. Factor meals eliminate the hassle of prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. Simply heat and savor the good stuff. Yes, sir. So all you have to do is head to factormeals.com slash Locked on MLB 50 and use the code locked on MLB 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code locked on MLB 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on MLB 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. Here we go. And this episode is also brought to you by our good friends over at Prize. Picks and you could have been absolutely hammering the over on the Lewis Arias hits today, no doubt about it. And Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than three million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action 
while you watch your favorite sports and players. Just pick more or less than on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in, baby. Spring training, as we know, is over and baseball season is officially underway. Don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond into your prize picks entries, whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, or first inning runs. And if you are Marlins fan, then first innings run is where you need to be. Take your pick of more or less than and add them to your prize picks entries today. All you have to do is download the app today and use the code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match of up to one hundred dollars. Reminder: Download the app today. Use the code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to a hundred bucks. Prize picks: Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, guys, welcome back to Locked On Marlins with me, Peter Pratt, and the UK GOAT, Sean Barrett. It's an emergency podcast on a Sunday evening. Skip Schumacher is going to be out as Marlins manager after the 2024 season. It's a surprise in some ways. In other ways, it isn't. But Craig Mish is talking about the timing. So, Sean, let's try and piece this together as best we can. What do we think Craig Mish is alluding to here, that this leak has happened. <laughs> I mean, I tweeted about it during the game. The game hasn't actually finished yet because they're in a rain delay. Just saying that Skip's going to dance into the post-game presser, thinking all sunshine and rainbows. We won our first game. The next thing is, the first question is going to be, Skip, tell me about the decision to void that team option. And he's going to be like, hey, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> I thought this was going to be a good one. But what's what do you think Craig's alluding to here around this timing of this announcement for uh for well to be well for the information to be outed let's say regarding skip I love that uh, his way of saying a lot without saying a single thing I know um, he, he's so good at this he is. Uh, this is the first question you've got to ask yourself is who has it been leaked by is it the organization or is it skip and, and clearly it's the organization like I don't think there's any any uh, one's going to argue against that. So mm. why would they do it now at 0-9 to soften the blow? If the Marlins had started off 9-0 and and then suddenly it was leaked that this was the end of his year, they, they would be up for. Mm. Um, and so I think they've tried to soften that blow. They've tried to do it <laughs> late on a Sunday. <laughs> Snug it through there. Yeah, that's the best time to like on it's like a political news dropping on the Friday evening when no one's, <laughs> everyone's looking forward to the weekend and, and focusing on that. You can slip by a couple of new law <laughs> changes so or whatever you want to do. So they've done this at the perfect time as far as trying to, to limit the exposure and also the, the reaction. Um, as it is, the reaction is understandably negative from pretty much every fan of the Marlins. And it's not just a skip thing. It's it's a clear um, sort of signal to what the plan is for the next couple of years, the next four, five years. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a shame that this is what we're going to have to sit through now. But Mish is right. This is, this is a case of why have they done it now? And that is exactly why. Oh, boy. Boy, oh, boy. This is a Marlins leak. They, they've shared this information. They want people to know this information. The timing is right, maybe, to share this information. And heading into the year, if we didn't believe that there was about to be a rebuild, we certainly know it now. Like, this is entering a phase rapido. This is getting to a phase very quickly, I think. Spoke about it on yesterday's episode, actually. It wouldn't stun me to see a big deal happen in April. I mean, the way these pitching injuries are going down, you know, all of a sudden is is Lazardo like moving Lazardo could become like the, it could become the optimal timing if someone loses their ace and they're like, "Uh oh, we need Lazardo now." So, man, this rebuild is going to pick up ahead of steam quickly, and it's really discouraging for the fans. You know, the negativity around Twitter is 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 rightly, you know. <laughs> Toxic at this point, to be honest with you, but it all points back to, you know, Bruce Sherman and Peter Bendix. They, at this point, they care little for the fans. They, they, they just don't care at this point, which is pretty sad. Very sad, actually. This is only going to be my second rebuild. Others that are listening to this show, and I know you included, Sean, you've been through 
multiple other iterations of this. And it always ends back in the same spot. <laughs> it's, it's just a cyclical event for the Marlins. Rebuild, have one little flash in the pan and rebuild. It's, ne it's never sustainable, no matter how much, because Jeter said the same thing as Bendix. Layers upon layers of talent. Never happens. I think it's a myth. I think it's a lie. Saw a great tweet from a Rays fan uh, this morning, basically describing the Rays organization at this point. Um, basically saying we've got no starters, no bullpen, and no offense. <laughs> made, me, made me really laugh because I, I looked at it and thought, oh, it must be a Marlins fan, but it wasn't. It was a Rays fan. So the question I've got to ask is, is the Rays model dead? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But nevertheless, it's going to be a tough sell when... You know, we look at the big names and it's Lazardo, it's Arias, and it's Jazz, Sean. Really, they're the three guys I'm looking at that, you know, are your Yelich, your Stanton, your Ozuna, your Riamuto. Like, they're the guys that are going to be gone most likely before 2025 arrives. And that is hugely discouraging for the fan base, no doubt about it. So, um, who goes first? Who goes first? Skip, Lazardo, Arias? Or Jazz? Which one of them is no longer a Marlin first? I think of what is goes at the deadline. I think he's the number one. Um, and yeah, the, the rest of those guys are, are going to be gone um, sooner rather than later. At this point, you're looking at people that can survive a, a rebuild, as in who's got the control. So you're looking at Maya, you're looking at yeah. Aerie, um, maybe Berger. Maybe Berger ends up being the, the, the face of the hitting um, profile of the team, maybe Jesus. He's a guy that you, they could probably keep on um, at a lower number. But yeah, all those all those guys that we're we're trying to hype up and and, and think are the guys that are going to push us over in in a push year uh, are probably going to get pushed out instead. Yeah. The interesting thing too is you look around and you you see what this off season's been, where so many guys that have ability no one's wanted them it's been like a like you know Garrett Cooper I think is one of the most obvious examples and the market has dried up for these fringe guys in some ways that they don't want to pay the same may be true for the Marlins with these trade situations where they may struggle to find trade partners for these guys it's different for Arias, Lozado and Jazz but you look at maybe I don't know, you look at like a De La Cruz, for example. Probably a really good example, De La Cruz. Whereas as Marlins fans are a bit like, it looks a decent enough hitter. But is anyone really going to give anything up of note for De La Cruz? I don't think so. Unfortunately not. When you're talking about a corner outfielder who really should field. be a DH, who yeah. is a, a career below 100 WRC+. plus, Like, he is... He, he, average. Is, he is to any other team a quad A player for them. Yeah. It's only because with the Marlins, our lineup is replete with quad A players um, that we're hoping to break out. De La Cruz yeah. is pre-breakout, unfortunately. And you're right, I don't see much talent on this roster. When you mentioned Yelich and Stanton and Ozuna for the, the previous rebuild, yeah. um, obviously with the contracts, they didn't get much for Stanton, but they got that salary mm -hmm. relief, which I'm sure the Yankees would take now. Yep. Um, but this time round, yeah, that that talent just isn't there. They're not going to get those top 10 prospects, those top 25 prospects, even maybe top, top 50. For Lozardo, I think he will. Pitching, obviously, at this point, a healthy elite pitcher is going to get you a return. But yeah. Marlins, through this rebuild, are going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. They're going to have to draft and develop. Um, and that's where Bendix is going to, in three or four years or five years' time, that's when maybe we'll turn around and say we were wrong. We should have trusted him. And, and, and But that's three, four, five years away, and that's trusting a guy that we only barely know through a rebuild when we've just seen a failed rebuild. This yes. is this is a tough pill to swallow for Marlon Sands. That is a, it's a great point. Peter Ben, like Peter Bendix has not earned any trust with me personally. I don't know Peter Bendix. He walks through the door, sounds a nice guy. Next thing is, he says, what I'm going to do is blow up your roster, Mr. Pratt. I'm going to blow your roster up that just gave you all of that excitement last year. Are you with me? <laughs> I'm looking at Peter Bendix and just saying, get the hell out of here. 
Are you crazy? And this is it. Like, it's such a tough sell. One that the fans. Okay. We understand the situation about trying to operate like the Rays. And that's fine. And we get it. Great. More analytically driven. A lot then the front office had all these new people in there. But to then blow up the full roster and get a load of guys in that are like 18, 19 years old, that may be prospects, that could be prospects in five years. I'll be 45 years of age. I'd have done nearly 2 million episodes of Locked on Marlins by then. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> so it is, it, I'm, I'm with you, Sean. It's a tough pill to swallow. Um, I mean, who knows? Who knows how it goes? It's interesting that you went with Arias that you think is the first to go um, at the deadline. Um, which makes sense. I mean, it, he has to be moved at this deadline or the off season, and just the clock's ticking on the value, I guess. So it makes total sense. He's got the least amount of control of those three guys. So I'm completely with you. Tell me, Sean, what's your confidence level in Peter Bendix at this point? You know, we've had, you know, five months of Peter Bendix or whatever it might be. What we've seen thus far, you know, try and summarize your confidence level in, in him at this point. You mentioned it. The problem is it's just so early. Like how how much trust can you invest in a maybe, in a hopefully? Um, I've done pretty well with with Marlin's um, expectations by expecting the worst thing to happen. Yeah, um, and I know I get called mm. negative and pessimistic, <laughs> but when I when I predict something in a pessimistic way, it, lo and behold, it, it always happens. So. Mm. How much hope can I have in Bendix? I mean, I can't put any. I'm not, I'm not saying he can't do it. I'm not saying he can't achieve it. I'm just saying that I personally can't commit that enthusiasm of saying, let's get behind this rebuild. Because I don't, I don't know the guy and I've just seen a failed one. So it is a case of, mm. you know, I, I always go with the Marlins. I believe it when I see it. I'll get yes. excited when I need to get excited. That playoff run, I got, I got hella excited. Yeah, I, my heart rate at the beginning of those games were, was was huge. It was probably an unhealthy amount of um, <laughs> so. But you know, I I've got to wait four or five years now to make hopefully, maybe, possibly feel that mm. again, and that's that's the biggest shame. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I've got a follow up for you. I'm going to hit the ad though. I'm going to ask you the question. I'll let the listeners ponder on this too, and then I'll hit the ad while you're pondering. Who do you think is going to be the next manager for the Marlins, or what profile will they have? Before we do that, it's time to let you know about our good friends over at Robin Hood. Yes, sir. And did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robin Hood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robin Hood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. The offer is good through April 30. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. All right, guys, back here with me, Peter Pratt and UK GOAT, Sean Barrett, reacting to the news that Skip Schumacher is out as Marlins manager after this year. Not immediately, not effective immediately, but out at least or at, at best at the end of the year. And who knows? He may go before that. It may be carted out of Lone Depot in a shopping trolley for all we know. No beers flowing. Do you want to ask you the question before the ad? Who's going to be the next manager? It's probably not easy to answer that off the cuff on the fly, but at least you could give a sense of um, maybe the profile of Guy. Or if you do have a name or two, great. Throw it out there. Well, first off, it's a shopping cart, surely. Um, what did I say? Shopping trolley? Shopping trolley, yeah. I went UK with it. Okay, yeah. Shopping cart to 97% of our listeners. Um, as far as, yeah, I mean, the, the world is your oyster, as you know, there's a thousand names out there. Um, one thing that's clear is that Bendix is willing and able to pick people from the Rays. 
So far, we've seen him pick players. I wouldn't be surprised if it isn't somebody from the Rays. Um, of course. It's because, of course. I mean, you, you want to be more at the Rays, get more Rays. Um, and, but the thing is, like, oh, shit, it's not going to be Kevin Cash. Um, it might not even be the bench coach. There are going to be guys lower down. Like, the Marlins, the job is not enticing enough. Like, we've just mentioned about the idea of how excited yeah. we're about a rebuild. Imagine being a manager being told, do you want to come over here and your first managing role, the thing that you've been working towards your whole career, your dream role, mm. and you're going to lose 300 games in your first three years. It's not exactly an enticing role. So it's going to have to be someone a bit further down the, the depth chart, as it were, of coaches. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, it's such a, such a long thing. It's going to be some guy that he's worked with for sure. But that's that's a comfort, isn't it? You want to be able to know that the guy thinks like you think when you explain something advanced to him, um, especially with the way that the Rays work with sabermetrics. You want him to, you want to trust and know that he understands it. Um, and I'm not saying that Skip doesn't. It's just they don't have that familiarity. And obviously, as we mentioned before, Skip I don't think was ever here in the long term. Um, I think he's a, a rising star shooting to the top. Um, we, saw, we saw that before with Joe Girardi leaving and going to the Yankees um, yeah. many, many years ago. And I think that's that's going to be the case for Skip here as well. <laughs> yeah, interesting one. I, I, the point you make there is is a really good one around when you're selling, you're going to have to sell this job to someone. And this is where I think it gets interesting. Can you get a first-time manager? There's only a certain amount of managerial jobs available, right? But... Can you get a first-time manager to commit to the Marlins and to this rebuild that's going to take multiple years? Or is it maybe a better fit to find, to have someone that's maybe like done it before, that knows the ropes? You know, I, I, I think a young, a young buck like Skip worked really well when you're trying to like, your window feels like it's opening a bit. And maybe like you re you 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 inject some pace, some vigor, some spunk into the organization, which is basically what we saw with Skip. Mm. It's tough to to do that when you're losing a ton of games, and that that message is going to struggle. So I'm I'm really interested to see what profile they go. A few people have already called out Gabe Kapler is in the organization already as an assistant GM of social media or whatever he does, walking around the streets just. You know, recording videos, whatever Gabe Kapler does, I don't know, but he has experience. He's in the organization. Uh, I I certainly like that shout from. You no, know, I like that. I like where people's heads are at with that call. He's done it before. He's in the organization. Put him in there. Why not? The other one, I don't know. You could get like a Martin Prado into the mix, like a kind of a guy that the Marlins you know, fans know maybe and have an affection with maybe could work but either way it's going to be potentially a really tough job in some ways when you know they're, they're about to move some of their best guys triple a has not a lot available to it to kind of backfill those positions you're going to be banking on griffin conine to come out and and be a, a big league player very soon like griffin conine's time is is getting closer by the day um, Tristan Gray's time is getting closer by the day. Uh, five home runs in five games, I believe, for Tristan Gray, by the way. So absolutely on fire with that stick. But Sean, this there's more meat on the bone with this story, I sense. You know, more will come out over time. This decision has been made. We now hear about it now. Craig Mish is kind of calling out, well, he probably knows, but he's not really saying but he's alluding to the timing of this is interesting and the way this plays out is going to be interesting. Final one before we get out of here, the skip Schumacher see out the season with the Marlins. Does he make it to game one, six, two or game one, six, one, depending on the Mets top situation. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm now fully in on the one, six, one for the year. Um, yes, he does. Um, unless the Marlins do something, unless the Marlins force that issue, Skip's going to act like a professional. This is, no him him doing his job day in day out staying will do his resume the world of good he'll look like the true he can he can talk about the Marlins being the unprofessional part of this uh, situation by just acting like the professional that he is 
Um, so he'll be here unless the miners do anything. And and you're right, we'll stick to stick to mission and we'll look forward, hopefully, to his uh, Miami Held article where I'm sure he'll break down an awful lot of it. I'm sure that will be dropping very, very soon. No doubt about it. And uh, we'll we'll get the insight there. So, yeah, we'll wait to see what the, the full situation is. We'll wait to hear from Skip because to that point, as soon as this news breaks, next thing is you will start to be asked questions around that topic area specifically. And so he will deflect or he will answer, I guess, you know, but to your point though, I think it's a really good one as well. Um, Skip can do no wrong. He's rocked into Miami as a first time manager. He's one manager of the year. Right now, the roster is being blown up in front of him. It seems the, well, the off season, the front office didn't give him any more tools, took a few away and didn't give him any more team starts slow. They announced this information. They're blowing it up. It's not on Skip. This isn't anything to do with Skip. Um, so he can go anywhere he wants, in my opinion. We're 35 minutes in, so that means we're five minutes over, and we haven't spoken about the game that is kind of ongoing and may have finished by now, but may not have. I don't know. The Marlins were winning. We think the streak's over. And Max Meyer went six innings. The first Marlins started to go six innings. Sean, go on. You look like... The game has restarted. We're eight and a third through, and the Cardinals have scored two runs already. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, do we need to stay on just in case in case it goes and they fully blow it <laughs> oh it's gone final 10-3 there you go breaking news at the back end of a Skip Schumacher emergency podcast the Marlins the O had to go and it's gone now 1-9 and nine on the year I told you they were going to put up 10 runs today I could feel it coming but the Marlins have got the win we're going to speak about it in more detail uh, tomorrow I think don't have time in this episode but the main headline, the Marlins have snapped the streak. And Max Meyer went six. We spent a lot of time on Max Meyer tomorrow, I think, on that one. But the O was gone. But it feels like even though the Marlins didn't take the L on the field, it feels like they've taken the L off the field, which, again, is another slap in the face for the fans. Thanks for joining me, Peter Pratt, and the UK GOAT, Sean Barrett, on an emergency locked on Marlins on a Sunday evening. We'll look forward to seeing you guys next week for more drama. See you then.